In the forests of the early Cretaceous, it is rare to see any of the large species of dinosaur, with the dense vegetation restricting their movements. However, you can often find many of their young, taking advantage of the forest's plentiful resources before they outgrow it. Like this infant Sinotyrannus, his kind can grow up to 10 meters long, the apex predator of prehistoric China. This 30 centimeter youngster is destined for the top of the food chain, but for now he feeds mostly on insects, and he himself is prey. When he senses a threat, his first instinct is to freeze, as to not give away his position from movement, and if he knows he has been spotted, to run and hide in the dense foliage. He scurries amongst the dead leaf litter, looking for anything too small to fight back and too slow to escape. His foraging leads him to a rotting log, and he peers inside of it. He spies some insects, but something else as well. In the darkness of the hollow log, he sees two yellow lights. They are the eyes of a mammalian predator. Most mammals at this time don't get much larger than rats, but this one is much, much larger. The odd mix of rodent and badger is eyeing the small dinosaur that has entered its lair, and the tiny Sinotyrannus freezes. The mammal hasn't moved, so to the dinosaur, it therefore hasn't seen him. This is a mistake, and the mammal is more than intelligent enough to know when to attack. Its yellow eyes dart forward, and the only sound that comes from the mouth of the burrow is a snap of closing jaws and a stifled squeak. The Sinotyrannus' destiny as an apex predator is over in an instant. His killer is Repnomanus. And at about 1 meter and 12 kilograms, this is about as large as Mesozoic mammals get. While most mammals at this time are herbivores or insectivores, Repnomanus is a carnivore. And with plenty of small dinosaurs in his forest home, he is often spoiled for choice. Normally, he is nocturnal. But food walking in on your front door is always a good reason to rise from slumber. Using his sharp teeth, he rips the head off the Sinotyrannus first and crushes it in his jaws. Soon after, however, he is interrupted by another dinosaur at the entrance of his log. Peering in with wide, beady eyes is some form of oviraptor. This forest is full of small feathered dinosaurs and even more species of bird with the line between the two often blurred. The feathered oviraptor is likely foraging, but to the Repromanus, this is an invasion and an attempt to steal his kill. The mammal rears up and bolts forward, screeching and baring its teeth in an extremely aggressive display. Shocked by the sudden and loud attack, the oviraptor leaps backwards, almost falling over himself in fear. Right in his footing, the dinosaur swivels around and flees as fast as he can, flapping its arms despite the fact he could not fly. The Repromanus chased it for a few seconds, gnashing his teeth and growling harshly. Finally, it stopped running and let the small dinosaur go. Much like modern honey badgers, Repromanus are very aggressive, and these seemingly over-the-top displays are one of the ways they survive in a dinosaur-filled world. The harsh sunlight momentarily hurts the mammal's eyes, and he realizes he is exposed. He moves back to the safety of the log to finish his meal, and sleep till nightfall. Then he will venture out to hunt. Someone has to remind the reptiles that the mammals are still alive, and fighting. Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we will be breaking down one of the largest mammals of the Cretaceous, Repomamus. Repomamus was originally discovered in 2000 in the Yuzhang Formation of China and lived between 125 and 123 million years ago in the early Cretaceous. The genus of Repomamus contains two species, Robustus and Gigantus, and they aren't related to any modern mammal. Robustus grew to about 50 centimeters long and between 4 to 6 kilograms. Gigantus grew to 1 meter long and between 12 to 14 kilograms. Both had a thick body with relatively short legs in a sprawl posture, 
unlike modern mammals that hold their legs under their body. They also lack the epipubic bones of placental mammals, so it could have laid eggs like monotremes or produced underdeveloped young like marsupials. The skull of Rhipomanus is clearly one of a carnivore, with large teeth at the front and grinding teeth at the back. One fossil shows that a Rhipomanus had consumed a juvenile dinosaur, specifically a Piscosaurus, leading it to achieving fame as a dinosaur killer. Very few mammals got anywhere near the size of Rhipomanus, with most being around rat or squirrel size, though some other species may have gotten larger during the time of the dinosaurs. However, their remains are mostly fragmentary, and so Rhipomanus is an excellent example of one of the mammals that broke the mold. This larger size enabled it to feed on larger prey, including infant dinosaurs and possibly full-grown small dinosaurs, as the area it lived in was full of them. It certainly is a refreshing discovery to show not all mammals were at the bottom of the food chain, and while most of the time dinosaurs were completely dominant, it's impressive that some mammals did evolve to at least low-level predators. It is often compared to badgers or Tasmanian devils, and this seems accurate. It wouldn't have been a threat to medium or large dinosaurs, but to anything small on the forest floor, they were likely a large threat. Of course, mammals wouldn't get their chance to rise up till after the dinosaur's extinction, but their ability to adapt and fill niches was no doubt a key to their survival, while the tyrant lizards reigned. But what do you think of Rhipomanus? And do you think it was an aggressive hunter like I depicted, or a timid creature that stuck to the shadows? Let me know what lesser known extinct creature you'd like me to cover in a future episode, and until then, thank you for watching.